after diagnosis of heart disease, there are some challenges patients face in adjusting their lifestyle. One of the main challenges is getting on a good exercise program. People have some arthritis or lifestyle issues or work-related issues that limit their ability to get on a good exercise program. But current recommendations are to do 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise five times a week. And getting on that program can be challenging for many people. If there are arthritis or knee pain or other issues that limit one's ability to exercise, they should work with their provider or physician to understand what can be done because they could potentially do biking that's easier on the knees or swimming that's easier on the joints. There are a few reasons why women are affected more than men with regards to heart disease. One issue is the kind of symptoms women present with. They can have atypical symptoms. So typical cardiac symptoms with coronary artery disease includes chest pain or chest pressure wherein you feel tightness or squeezing in the chest. Women might not necessarily have those. They might come in with fatigue, they might come in with back pain, or they might come in with shortness of breath. So there might be misdiagnosis or delay in diagnosis that could delay care. Estrogens that they have in the body, the hormone is preventive for heart disease. But after menopause, they catch up to men with regards to the frequency of coronary artery disease. So we need to be more careful in women with regards to the kind of symptoms they have. With regards to the advancement in the field of cardiology, last 10 to 20 years have been quite exciting. Uh, last 40 years, there's a big paradigm shift with regards to how we manage heart disease, as many people know. But the last 10 years have been more exciting with regards to the advances. There are three areas of advances. One is advances in pharmacology has allowed us to find specific pathway directed therapies to address specific pathways for heart disease. The other examples are there are no specific medications available for heart failure that were not available before that are quite effective. Other areas of improvement is minimally invasive techniques. Traditionally, many heart conditions had to be treated with open heart surgery like valve replacements among others. Advancements now allow us to do minimally invasive catheter-based procedures to put new valves in the body in some patients as an alternative to open heart surgery. For somebody wanting to be heart healthy during this American Heart Association month, uh, there are few things that can be done. I think we should concentrate on making small changes to our lifestyle that you can keep up with long term, as opposed to making drastic changes that you can only keep up for like three to six months and you fall back on always. So the main two things I would suggest are diet and exercise program. So all of us know that food pyramid, so less red meat, more lean meats, more fruit and veggies in our dietary regimen would go a long ways in helping us and starting an exercise program. 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise program, five days a week is really helpful and most of us can achieve that. Finally, we don't talk enough about it, but self-care and stress management is very helpful in preventing heart disease long term, so that could include spending time with your friends, working on your hobbies, meditation, deep breathing exercises, several options are there, but I don't think we do enough of this in this day and age.